All right, welcome back to these things that I do, these videos. Uh, it's the Aries full moon right now, and I want to say a big shout out, thank you to my girl Kiki Chulaquiles for this. I, you know what? I really, I've seen people put on makeup, and I watch the videos, and I have like a huge respect for it. I've never in my life had my makeup done. And I sat there and she's like poking at my eyes and I'm making all kinds of sounds. It's a lot. It looks amazing. I love, I love it. It's amazing. But also like, wow, to everybody who does makeup, puts on makeup, I respect the hell out of y'all because it's real hard to not like want to wipe my eyes or anyways it's just it's just funny I like I feel almost like I'm dressing up when I go high femme uh and I am this is my costume anyways uh so Aries full moon and um this is some positive cards we've got here we've got the sunflower card which is expansion and new opportunities we got the Daughter of Wands, which is a fire element card, and we got Unikite here. And so these cards, they kind of are giving me, you know, even though we're moving into fall and it's like the death and the seasonal affective disorder and all of these things that come up with the holidays and family and cold, even with all of that, these cards are signaling a possibility for revival in terms of like your energetics and how you're feeling um and not just that automatically this revival will happen of your energy but that you it is required that you put in some effort in order to cultivate that and i think this goes along with the past few readings that i've been doing and the progression of things and how you need to continue moving the energy in order for your momentum to continue going and so i will start off with the daughter of wands and so i love this card this like young snake wrapped around the wand in this figure eight giving us this idea of connectivity to everything and understanding the flow and the rhythm of things and snake kundalini energy our sexual energy our kundalini force and it's also um orange and red on the snake which signals to me the root chakra and the sacral chakra so our grounding and our um our energy our creative energy and so this card is speaking to, since it's the daughter, it's about the feminine receptive of the fire element. So this meaning to cultivate your creative energy and to learn what that looks like to you and what makes you happy, what makes you excited to create so that you can be invested in putting more energy into that. Like, what are you excited about learning about? What are you excited about creating? How can you funnel more energy into that segment of your life in order to have more energy and to be cultivating the energy so that you can be a master in the thing that you are wanting to create? And I also, you know, again, I always pull these cards and they always feel really valid to me in my life and it's always a blessing when I see that it's valid for other people but for me particularly like I've been thinking about for a really long time creating a like podcast of sorts and I'm really actually excited about doing it I'm excited about how I can share with this different medium and excited about the things that we can talk about and so that's what I'm thinking when I see this card is like what am I excited about creating? What makes me want to research and study and dive deeper into things so that I can talk about things and so that we can share conversations that ultimately draw us all closer together. And that's what I see when I think of like creative energy, particularly with this figure eight symbolism. It's like, how can we connect the energies by us all getting excited about whatever it is that we're excited about? And then when we're excited about what it is that we're doing and what we're creating, we inevitably draw more any energy like that to us. 
and so on and so forth. And then we create these systems where we're feeding each other instead of constantly being in like the model of capitalist competition with each other. And so I think that that's really exciting. And I would like encourage us all to just get in the patterns of doing what is our purpose or what is what we're driven to want to do. And, and then the more that we spend time and energy doing that, the more that we create opportunities of expansion and of new opportunities in general. Um, the sunflower card. And so sunflower, I'm really thinking the solar plexus chakra. This is the chakra where we're like connecting to others, connecting to ourself and how we're portraying ourselves. It's this solar energy and that is how we're putting we're giving our life force energy how we're shining ourselves out and when i think of a sunflower i think of these amazing beautiful huge flowers that really they just shoot up most flowers they grow in vines and then the the flowers come off from the ends of the vines but sunflower takes all of its energy puts all of its energy into this one big flower and it opens up to the sun and then when the sun goes down or when the flower starts to fade it puts its head down to the earth and it drops its seeds and the interesting thing and why this flower is tied to ego is um, it can be very um, what is it called when it takes over a place invasive um, and so because it has so many seeds and it just drops them all over it can really take over a place and like become this massive thing and it's beautiful to see a bunch of sunflowers but it's also like we want to diversify the garden we want to have several pollinators we want to have all different kinds and so the the cautionary tale about this card is like how can you cultivate your energy of feeling of yourself shining your light doing what it is that you want to do which ultimately creates more opportunities coming back around to you because you're emanating that energy out and not getting so full of ourselves that we are caught up in the ego of everything and like wanting the clout wanting whatever we just got to keep our mind focused on like what's for the highest good of all how can we handle each and every choice each and every situation with the intention always being on what is for the highest good of all of us and I think that that's how we can draw the opportunities that are going to be most actually beneficial for us and I'm not talking beneficial in the way of just material gains but beneficial in your soul growth and to get you more on the path of feeling like life is worth living that's what I've been coming to is like how can I feel like life is worth living because to be 100% honest it doesn't always feel like that it really doesn't I'm like there's really too much there's too much constantly inundating us trying to drag us down trying to distract us from what's actually right for us and I gotta we all gotta like keep ourselves attuned and if I think that if we stay attuned with what is for the highest good of all and what spirits are working with us for the highest good then life can be less stressful and then we could help others realize that life could be less stressful potentially or we could help others lives be less stressful by contributing because we will have more energy to contribute and we will be setting healthy boundaries with people so that we are only working with people who contribute back with us and then that's how real like bonded trusting community is built and so all of this i think can really be tied back to like allowing this this beauty this sunlight into ourselves and shining it out and this last card that i'm going to talk about the unikite card or yeah unikite <laughs> i have one right here actually let's see if we can get it it's these beautiful green and pink stones and they're jaspers so jaspers always speak to a grounded stabilizing energy but because this one is like a green and pink stone it has to do with the heart chakra and so that's our electromagnetic center of our body that tells us what what we are repelled from and what we want to bring closer and it's hard 
to always be in tune with our hearts in a society that doesn't want us to be in tune with our hearts. It wants us to be misdirected and to be giving our energy to all other things and to not be protecting our auric field around ourselves so we're getting psychic vampirism all over the place. But to protect our heart and to stabilize ourselves, that's what this stone is all about. It's all about grounding our emotional energy into the earth and getting ourselves to a space where when we're having emotional flare-ups whatever they may be like ups and downs to take it slowly to really breathe and examine what is happening in any moment to examine our reactions to things to examine how our emotions can take us away from our physicality and can take us away from taking care of ourselves because so often our emotions can flare up things can and i mean aries full moon of course things are gonna flare up of course they're gonna flare up and we have this opportunity to witness how it is that we're feeling to witness our reactions to things and to choose to handle things differently to choose to be like i see that maybe before I would have reacted to this situation differently, but now I have my priorities straight. Now I know that I'm just doing what is for the highest good of all. And if anybody's coming at me sideways, do I have to deal with it? How can I deal with it in a more functional way? How can I reach out to my support system that is going to hold me and care for me and keep me safe in times of dramatics? Because People are having dramatic reactions to the fact that they don't actually have access to our energy anymore because we are learning to divert our energy into healthier spaces. Those people who are used to feeding off of the energy in unhealthy ways are like, where's my energy source? We're taking it all back, baby. The Unikai is helping us take it back. We're drawing ourselves back into our heart center. We're figuring out what feels good for us and what doesn't feel good for us. And by understanding what feels good and what doesn't feel good, you're so much better able to draw boundaries, to protect yourself, to protect yourself from whatever, and to know who to go to who can help protect you. And I believe the more that we fill our own cups, the more that we are able to share with others and to help others fill their own cups. And the more that everybody's filling their own cup and learning how to share resources and share what it is that we have to share and to do what it is that we feel is our purpose to do, the better the world will be. And what an amazing thing that would be. And a new expansion and new opportunities abound given that awareness and that grounding so ground yourself into your heart feel the awareness of yourself and what it is that you need to feel safe and cared for and loved witness your reactions and understand that the way that you react and the way that you choose to make all of your choices affects everything everything in this universe in the multiverse in multiple dimensions everything every choice is important every symbol that we see every synchronicity that happens to us is important and the sooner that we get that the sooner we can potentially get ourselves out of these loops where we feel like we're stuck in hell that might just be me but sometimes I feel like I'm stuck in hell. I don't want to do it anymore. So let's turn the tide. Let's find a better way to be together. And uh, yeah, thanks so much. And I'll see you next week.